Hey, I'm Juanito. Thanks for watching. Say you want a modular synthesizer, but you don't want the hassle and expense of heavy racks and difficult to fabricate face plates made out of plate aluminum and awkwardly shaped rectangular modules. You want to get away from all this hassle of standard ways of doing things. And you want to save a lot of money. Well, check it out in this video. I'm going to show you how to make modules out of old tin cans, brown paper, and carpenter's glue. Carpenter's glue. You probably already have all those things in your trash besides probably carpenter's glue. You might have to buy that. Anyway. By the way, all the music in this uh, video is made by me on my modular synthesizer. The 808 kick drum that you'll see later is the actual kick drum doing the bass line. In the main song that's running through the whole thing. So, let's begin. This is one of the most important things you need if you want to build a synthesizer in tin cans. You need a can opener, the kind that opens the very edge of the can, not the top part, not the part right here where the wall is, but the very edge of that lip. Star kiss. Now, this is a Pampered Chef can opener. It has some nice little features like this little claw thing that will let you pry the can lid off. When the can lid comes off, you have no sharp edge. That's a dull edge on the top of the lid. There's no, on the top of the can, there's no sharp edge. You can get can openers like this from your local Pampered Chef representative, but they uh, are all over the place. Um, Amazon, AliExpress, you can get the kind that opens on the very edge. Look for can openers that say, that advertise that they're safe and they don't leave any sharp edges. Any is the lid, and here is what you have to do to turn the lid into a proper module faceplate. You need to find some carpet, get yourself a screwdriver with a smooth plastic end. Tonight I'm going to try to build an 808 kick drum circuit. And then hopefully I'll have time to turn it into put it into this lid and turn it into a module. Okay. That looks pretty good. So I built I built this 808 kick drum with voltage controlled pitch and I am going to show you how to put it on a lid like this. I have a little awl that's covered in glue, but it'll, I'll clean it up during this process. So when you're making holes in a lid like this, you can poke a hole just barely through the metal. Okay. So poke it this way the first time. This is turn it over. If you get the same kind of all that I got, scratch thing tool, it's uh, I think three millimeters in diameter, which is perfect for three millimeter LEDs. So then you poke it through from the front and then poke it through from the back, go all the way through this time. And then you have a hole with a little lift. And then I have some cheap 
needle nose pliers going the other way. Attach it on the back with the nut, and you're good to go. If you have a potentiometer like this that you want to attach, this is a little tougher. These potentiometers have a little lip of metal right there, and if you do it really carefully, that lip of metal can form a really nice interference fit, and you can press it into place and it's nice and secure. Of course, it'll pop out with any stress, but if you can get the hole exactly the right size, you can push it into place and then use some E6000. I thought I'd be able to reach over there and grab it out of my drawer without looking, and that would have been cool. And then I thought I could hold it up in front of the camera and have it be right way up, but I failed in that too. But if you have some E6000, you can put some of that goop around here. And as long as you leave it alone while it, cure, while it dries, it'll be nice and strong. Another option is to use 3D printing filament from a 3D pen. right here and you can kind of build something up to make it nice and secure. If you decide to use a 3D pen, 3D pen material, the filament won't stick very well to the bare metal so it's good to smear a really thin layer of E6000 or goop on your face plates before you use uh, 3D pen filament. Cut a strip, get yourself some PVA carbonate glue. Carbonate glue is the stuff. I use the brand name Tight Bond 2, which um, basically is waterproof as well. Spread it.
incredibly strong once it dries. The jacks that I use, um, I will attach the little tab to the ground of the circuit, and that makes the faceplate grounded. Uh, since that's the case, then the can that you attach it to will also be grounded. So then you have a nice grounded enclosure for EMI shielding. Um, also, that means parts of your circuit, I mean, tin cans are lined with uh, plastic, food safe, plastic lining. Uh, but if you have a circuit in there that has like a little sharp edge that wiggles and scrapes at it, eventually it will scratch through. So don't ignore that kind of situation. Make sure you, any pieces that might end up touching of your circuit that might end up touching the edge are well insulated either with like hot glue or goop or 3D filament or wrap a piece of paper around the inside of the can to keep stuff safe. When you make a hole in the bottom of the can for the power wires, just poke it all the way through. And then use a little, sorry, then use some pliers to kind of flatten all the little sharp edges because you don't want the wires to, the insulation on the wires to get cut. Uh, when you're building a synthesizer like this, you really should build it with a power supply that is a switching power supply that will have short protection. So if you ever build a module that sh or if any of your wires short out, you're not going to have a transformer explode or something like that. Oh yeah, this is dry by now and it's seriously strong.